In this video about stress tensors, I will talk about how a three-dimensional stress state is described using a stress tensor. Let's start with the basic definition of stress. Stress is defined in general as the force divided by the area over which the force is acting. The units on stress are newtons per meter squared, which is also known as pascals. Now, a force could be acting normal to a face or parallel to a face, and this gives rise to normal stresses or shear stresses. In a normal stress, the force acts perpendicular to the area, and in a shear stress, the force acts parallel to the area. Let's take a look at an example of each of these. So if we consider some small volume, like this, then if we have a force which is acting in this way, this force is perpendicular to this top face and this bottom face, and so we would call this a normal stress. If instead that force were acting on the top and bottom faces, but in this direction here, then that's what we would call a shear stress. Now, a component could be loaded in such a way that there are both normal stresses and shear stresses present. Therefore, we need to consider the three-dimensional stress state. So, in the three-dimensional stress state, we could have normal and shear stresses acting on any of the faces. We're going to define the components of stress in the following way. With the notation sigma ij, where this is defined in the following way. This is the force acting in the j direction on the i face. So let's just put that in words because it can be confusing. This is the stress on the I face in the J direction. Let's look at an example of a cube where we have labeled these after defining a coordinate system. So let's take a look at how these stresses are, de are defined. We first need to define a coordinate system. So we're going to call this the x1 direction, this the x2 direction, and this the x3 direction. And then let's just remember that our stresses are defined in the following way, fj divided by ai. So if we start with the stresses, let's say, on the x3 face, then we can define first sigma 3, 3. This is the stress acting on the 3 face and in the 3 direction. Then we can define this sigma 3, 2. This is the stress acting on the 3 face in the 2 direction. And then finally, sigma 3, 1 the stress acting on the three face in the one direction. So in the case where the subscripts are mixed, those are our shear stresses. Now we can look on the x2, on the two face. So this would be sigma 2, 2 on the two face in the two direction. Sigma 2, 3 on the two face and in the three direction and 
sigma 2, 1 on the 2 face and in the 1 direction. And finally, we can consider uh, the stresses on the face 1. So this normal stress is sigma 1, 1. This shear stress on the 1 face in the 2 direction is sigma 1, 2. And this other shear stress on the 1 face in the 3 direction is sigma 1, 3. So the arrows here that are indicating the shear stresses indicate the direction of a positive shear stress. If the shear stress were acting in an, the opposite direction, that would be what we would call a negative shear stress. We can now take these components of stress and define what is called the stress tensor. So the stress tensor, this is sometimes uh, defined with the double underline, and this just collects these stress values together. So along the diagonal are the normal stresses, and then the off-diagonal terms represent the shear stresses. So this stress tensor has nine components to it. But in order to maintain equilibrium, it's the case that the shear stresses have to be equal to one another. So for equilibrium, sigma ij has to equal sigma ji, because otherwise this thing would start spinning. So in the end, there are six independent components to the stress tensor. So let's just summarize about the stress tensor. The stress tensor includes both normal stresses, where the force is perpendicular to the area. It includes shear stresses, where the force is parallel to the area. Our stresses are described by sigma ij, and we have six independent components of the stress tensor.